Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art. As if you didn't know, you're at my channel. You should know it's Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. <laughs> I don't know why I say that every night, but I do. Um, I'm going to continue reading from our document that I found. And what was it called? Shockingly enough, testing the validity of the International Atomic Energy Agency safety culture model, which is widely used at every single nuclear facility, which we have seen in here so far that it was never empirically tested. So the sociologists decided to test it. Hypothesis 2. The attributes of the model will be relevant to the dimensions to which they are supposed to belong, showing evidence of content validity. And I'm not going to read to you like the numbers from now on because each one of these sections, because it's a scientific journal, has like 2.25, 2.26. I'm not reading that. I'll just read the subtitle of the little area because, I don't know, for some reason my brain reads the numbers all screwy after working on numbers all day long. Okay, <clears throat> development of the survey. Now this is hypothesis two, remember. For the second study, Researchers used the same survey as in the first study in this paper. The development of the survey was explained in detail in section 2.12. Sampling procedure. The evaluation of content validity. Well, let me turn up the noise here a little bit. Maybe that will help. Somebody said, hey, can you turn the sound up? So there's the sound. Sampling procedure. The evaluation of content validity is dependent on knowledge about the underlying constructs being measured. A model, test, or measurement instrument has content validity when a group of subject matter experts, oh, love the acronym, SMEs, <laughs> subject matter experts, SMEs, rate its items high with regard to their relevance to and representativeness of the content domain tested. Therefore, content validity has to be assessed by experts in the constructs under study. Following this requirement, the second study of this paper counted with 48 experts in organizational behavior who were highly knowledgeable about organizational culture, leadership, organizational learning, management, values, roles, etc., and all the main constructs that the IAEA model and its attributes revolve around. The participants were industrial and organizational psychologists, not specialized in safety culture or the nuclear industry. The participants were industrial and organizational psychologists, not specialized in safety culture or the nuclear industry. Of them, 24 were PhD holders working in the Department of Social Psychology. Seven were undertaking doctoral research within the European Work, Organizational and Personnel Psychology Program, or WOPP, and 17 were completing the Erasmus Mundus Master in WOPP. Erasmus Mundus Master. That certainly must mean something that we're supposed to be impressed with, I think. <laughs> Furthermore, most of the participants teach these topics in degree, master, and doctoral courses and have published articles on these topics in scientific journals. Participants were between 23 and 58 years old with an average age of 35 years. 63% of the experts were female and 98 had worked before. Hmm. Survey administration. In this study, participants were contacted via email. They, provide, they were provided with the same instructions and survey received by the students in the first study. The experts were strongly encouraged to ask for any necessary clarification B 
before or while completing the survey. As in the first study, voluntary participation and anonymity were emphasized. The response obtained, excuse me, I'm going to read that again. The response rate obtained was 74%. In this second study, all 48 return surveys were found to be usable after determining the percentage of missing data and the absence of systematic response patterns. Feedback received from some experts highlighted the complexity of the survey due to the ambiguous and apparently overlapping dimensions. Hmm. Of course. <clears throat> I, I honestly don't know how the people in the nuclear industry live with themselves. Analysis and results. To offer a general approach to the content validity of the model, the experts' answers were analyzed at a global level. The average of correct answers per participant was 17, ranging from 9 to 27. That is, according to the experts, more than half of the attributes of the model, 53.49%, were not relevant to the dimensions to which they should belong. Wow! According to the experts, more than half of the attributes of the model were not relevant to the dimensions to which they should belong, and that number was 53.49%. Wow. While analyzing the experts answered at a dimensional level, noticeable differences in the content validity of the dimensions were found. The percentage of correct answers given by the experts was 47.6% in Dimension A, 60.8% in B, 35.8% in C, and 37.7% in D, and 44% in E. So to review, I'll put my glasses on. Those are those uh, things that I was reading last night. A, B, C, D, E. Here, I'll show you what they were. I'm going to tell you what they were. Now, check this out. A, okay, let's, oh, I hope I don't lose it. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, okay, so we're right there. So, okay, so this is, check this out. The percentage of correct answers given by the experts was 47.6% in dimension A, and dimension A is, Safety is a clearly recognized value. Only 47% said that they showed that. 60.8% in dimension B, which is leadership for safety is clear. 35.8% in C, huh, guess what this is folks, accountability for safety is clear. 37.7% in D, which is safety is integrated into all activities. 37.7%. Yeah, the people at Hanford, in fact, the people at every single nuclear facility know that shit. And 44% in E, which is safety is learning driven. Ha! Ah, who knew? Bunch of fucking liars. That's where I start cussing. I'm sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. This means that according to the judgments of experts, more than half of the attributes of dimensions A, C, D, and E were not appropriate or relevant to the dimensions they were supposed to measure. Dimensions C and D seem to be specifically problematic, while according to the participants' answers, Dimension B offered the highest content validity. And what was Dimension B? Let's read that again. Dimension B had the highest, which is leadership for safety is clear, meaning everybody's willing to blame their boss. The last analysis further examined the content validity of the IAEA model by testing the relevance of each attribute to each of the five dimensions in the model. 
The degree to which an attribute was relevant to the dimension to which it belongs, according to the IAEA, was determined by the percentage of participants who assigned this attribute to that dimension. Table 4 shows that results range from 2.1% of participants allocating attribute E1 to its corresponding dimension, which is safety is learning driven, to 95.8% of participants allocating attribute B3 to its corresponding dimension. Leadership for safety is clear. Hmm. So 95% of the participants said that they could see that. Hmm. This is freaking interesting. Researchers proposed two criteria to determine whether an attribute was relevant enough to the dimension to which it was supposed to belong. The first and less restrictive criterion considered an attribute to be relevant when the percentage of experts allocating it to its corresponding dimensions was higher than the percentages of experts allocating it to each of the other four remaining dimensions. The second and more restrictive criterion accepted every attribute that was allocated to its corresponding dimensions by at least half the experts. Results, results were less restrictive conditions. Uh -uh, I'm going to read that again. Results under less restrictive conditions indicated that 28 attributes were relevant enough to their corresponding dimensions. Five attributes that were supposed to be to measure dimension, excuse me, I'm going to read that again. Five attributes that were supposed to measure dimension A, nine dimension B, three dimension C, and four dimension E. This means that under the less restrictive criterion, one fourth of the attributes of the model were not relevant indicators of the dimensions they were supposed to measure. Oh, well, where's the last half of that sentence? Oh. When the participants' answers were analyzed using the more restrictive criterion, 17 attributes were considered relevant enough to their corresponding dimensions. In other words, according to the judgment of more than half of the experts, 46% of the attributes of the model were not good indicators of the dimensions they were supposed to measure. Both the face and content validity are essentially require are essential requirements of assessment instruments. It was agreed that those attributes satisfying face and content validity analysis could be more adequate for the current IAEA proposal. Under the less restrictive criterion, 20 attributes out of the 37 should be kept. While under the more restrictive conditions, only six should be maintained. It is worth noting that these attributes are the same ones accepted in the face validity study, with the exception of attribute E3, which under the restrictive conditions showed face validity, but did not show content validity. Our study suggests, therefore, that attributes with face validity have content validity as well, which is logical since an attribute that appears to measure a dimension would be expected to be relevant to that dimension, which is content validity. Conclusions Regardless of the way the answers have been analyzed, at a global, dimensional, or attribute level, experts' judgments Experts' judgments dubiously support the IAEA proposal. At the most specific levels, this is probably why this paper got published, because they support the IAEA proposal. At the most specific levels, many of the attributes and dimensions do not seem content valid to the experts. 
However, it is important to remember that the focus of this study is on the relevance aspect of content validity and not on the representativeness one. On the whole, the judgment of a sample of experts in organizational behavior suggests that the content validity of the IAEA mo model is rather moderate. As a conclusion of these first two studies, taking into account the opinion of both students and experts, it seems that the IAEA safety culture model should be constantly and substantially improved. Wow. How much have I read? Whew, 15 minutes. Well, I think I'm read out, so let me mark the page so I don't struggle tomorrow night trying to figure it out. So tomorrow night we're going to read the third test study. So we are plowing through this, folks, just a few more pages. But uh, not that we're surprised. I mean, what is this? This is October 7th, right? Or... Six, I guess the seventh is tomorrow or today. I don't know. The seventh is tomorrow, according to me, because this is really the sixth since I haven't gone to bed, and it's really October sixth. <laughs> That's how I count. Anyways, uh, and the stupid hurricane is slamming into St. Lucie nuclear power plant, and the meltdown is not going to be advertised, folks. So. IAEA safety culture at it once again. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow night. Put your courage feet on. Please take some action. Thank you for joining me. Subscribe. Share this. Talk about the information. Please join me on the Age of Fission radio show tomorrow. Dana's going to join me tomorrow. It's Friday. He usually does join me when he can. And uh, we need everybody. So... Put your courage feet on. Ciao, you guys. Talk to you soon.